Welcome to Evil Live, the live media commentary show that answers the question, why do you need a long spoon to sup with the devil? Subscribe if you're new to the channel, because today we are reviewing American Grotesque, the life and art of William Mortensen. Now, this book came out uh, a while ago. <laughs> it was published by Feral House November 25th, 2014, so it has been out for some time. I was, uh, <clears throat> it's one of those books that was on my wish list for a long time. Finally got it. Uh, I think my son actually got it for me, which you know I really appreciate. It. Uh, it's a great collection of what William Mortensen refers to as pictures, because it's not straight photography and it's not straight um, like uh, composition. Um, even though he did compose the shots and did a lot of the work in post as well to you know use some. Uh, special techniques in order to make the photos look like they did. Now, throughout the course of this, I'm going to have other images filter through, not just the cover of the book while I'm talking, so that you can, well, for example, so you can get a, a pretty decent idea about what he was like as a photographer and why it's called American Grotesque, because that's really the the uh, the style that William Mortensen, um, well, he didn't really create, but he definitely exemplified. So this includes uh, a number of essays, not just images. So uh, William Mortensen, Herald of American Grotesque by Michael Moynihan. Uh, this is an interesting, very short little essay uh, by Moynihan, and it doesn't really give you any information that you don't already know if you read A Command to Look already. Um, but it does give you a sort of a primer for what's to come uh, in the other essays. And also, once you start seeing the imagery, you'll get, uh, you know, you understand a lot better. And then there's The Life of William Mortensen by Larry Little. Now this is a very much a biographical sketch and it goes into detail about his entire life. Um, and it's uh, a little weighty, you know, and, and it's a lot of information that you probably don't need, but it's all referenced with footnotes and sources and it's, it's very exhausting <laughs> the amount of information that is given to us. But if you really want to know what this uh, photographer's life was like, and he actually lived here in Utah uh, and taught school here and was sort of uh, not quite run out of town, but, you know, based on his behavior with his students, he was, uh, you know, shown the door, so to speak. And he went out to uh, Hollywood and, you know, started working on film sets and started photogra uh, uh, photographing a lot of the uh, silent movie stars and stuff from the 30s and on so the, he's you know he's been around for quite some time and he's established you know he created his own techniques he ultimately started his own school where he taught his techniques and that's the only place you could ever learn some of the techniques he wrote a lot in a lot of articles and magazines and such so you know trade publications uh he was a prolific figure for a very long time but as soon as uh, we get to this purist photography versus pictorialist photography uh, struggle uh, within the industry, people like Ansel Adams, who is incredibly famous and well-known, they don't like him at all. They don't like William Mortensen, like, at all. They literally, Ansel Adams called him the devil in one situation. So, the Antichrist. I mean, he is seen because of the subject matter that he deals with as uh, and the methods that he uses as not a real photographer by these photography purists. Now, there's uh, another essay called Venus and Vulcan, an essay on creative pictorialism by William Mortensen and George Dunham, and I think it's very important that everyone understands that everything that William Mortensen is credited with when it comes to print articles uh, and notes it was really a ghostwriter. So all the techniques were Williams, but it was George Dunham who actually wrote everything. And so, you know, when you, you're talking about how a specific author reads and uh, the style and just the general vibe that you get from the writing, that's all George Dunham. That is not William Mortensen. But all of the techniques, all of the points that are uh, specific to Mortensen's experience, that all comes from him. It's just not written fully by him. And he gave George a, a very small <laughs> taste, let him wet his beak a little bit on uh, residuals for the different works that he wrote. But, you know, it really was William Mortensen's brainchild. So he, he, he gets the lion's share in that. 
And then we have a glossary of Mortensen's methods by Larry Little. And this is a, it's just, a, it's very short, very brief. It's like five or six different little technique blurbs that explain um, Mortensen's, uh, you know, special post photograph um, work and what he does to a photo and, and sort of the industry standards that he set uh, back in his day that other people tried to emulate and tried to copy and to very, you know, varying degrees of success, but mostly unsuccessfully, uh, unless you went to his school and learned from him because the techniques he used were very tedious. And what I find it interesting about this as um, a designer, as an artist, is that the, the post-process techniques that he used in his photography, that's all digital now. You know, you, we, we do all of that in uh, Lightroom and Photoshop. And so everything that he is trying to accomplish, we can do today digitally, but he did it literally with the film and razors in some cases and, you know, using different chemicals to get specific looks. And it's pretty amazing the amount of time and effort that he would go in to just getting a shot and getting it put together perfectly. And all the post-production work that he would do on any ind individual photo. So it's, uh, it's definitely not just set a stage, take a photo, develop it, and release it. That, that was just the beginning. And once he got into the photo booth and he started, the, you know, the dark room and he started really working with these images, he would spend hours and hours and hours just getting it perfect. Uh, and there's a lot of really wonderful techniques that you can learn by, uh, you know, of course, because you've read it doesn't mean you know how to actually execute them, but you can learn about them. And then we get a Mortensen gallery of grotesques. So this gives us about 100 uh, photos of, or pictures as he referred to it, because it's not a straight photo, uh, pictures of his work. And it's beautiful and it's a little bit disturbing in the best way. And I genuinely, absolutely love his style. He was obsessed with this idea of uh, witchcraft and seeing that uh, sort of personified in his work. He, he was going to write this entire uh, volume and, and collection on witches and witchcraft and the Sabbath, and he just never got around to finishing it ultimately. But we can see this image right here is, is one example of the work that he was working on. Um, and it's beautiful. I mean, the work is stunning. So you can't come into this and look at these images and not be transfixed. Now, of course, he literally wrote the book, Command to Look. And so it, the purpose of all of these images is to draw you in. And then once you're there, enjoy it and uh, really, you know, appreciate what it is. And I can't not help doing that. It's just, uh, it's a flawless technique that he has applied. And it's so brilliant looking. I mean, just look at this stuff. And then after that uh, 100 images, we have another article called Conspicuous by His Absence Concerning the Mysterious Disappearance of William Mortensen and A.D. Coleman. I'm sorry, by A.D. Coleman. So this is talking about how the purists uh, did everything they could to remove him from history. So every time they would put together these groups of um, the history of photography, whether they're individual books or whether they're gallery shows, Ansel Adams would go out of his way to make sure that Mortensen had nothing no part in it, even though Ansel Adams would ultimately use techniques that Mortensen discovered, literally invented or, or uh, fine-tuned. So you can see how these purists in photography are really just a bunch of douchebag assholes who want things to be their way. They want to take their balloon and they want to go home instead of allowing other people to explore photography in their own manner, in their own way. And even though he was a huge luminary of his time, like unarguably he, he did more for photography than Ansel Adams ever did because they're around later, they get to redefine what the history of photography means for everyone who comes after the fact. And so that's why when you have books like these come out, it's because the uh, authors want to share the truth about not just the history of photography, but this amazing photographer and, uh, uh, arguably, you know, inventor of, uh, of his own style. 
So, and it was the F-64 group that removed and excluded Mortensen from history, by and large, led by Ansel Adams, who saw him as the Antichrist. And that was the whole purist, uh, pictorialist debate amongst the industry. Um, you know, there was this idea of uh, fallacies of pure photography that they sort of argued over. And it's this concept of, well, if you have a pimple, if you remove that pimple, then you are destroying the image. But the truth is, is you're not taking the picture of a pimple. You're taking a picture of an individual. And so as long as, and this is the way Mortensen saw it, as long as the end result exemplifies the source, the, the, the center of the photo, if it's a, you know, a shot of me, for example, then that's all that matters. My wrinkles, my, any pimples or any scars or anything, those are less important. And if they get in the way of the truth of me in that photo, then you need to remove them because it's the subject that's important, not every detail in order to be accurate about the subject. And I can certainly appreciate that as a graphic designer because that's what we do every day. You know, you take anyone's photo and you're going to do some touch up. Maybe there's stray hairs. Maybe there's, uh, you know, the lighting was off just a little bit and it's accentuating too many lines in their face. I mean, there's a lot of different techniques that you need to exercise in order to really have a finished piece in order to present. And, and ultimately, you know, everything that he did, which was seen as... Um, underhanded or uh, fake by those purists is what we do now in post-processing of every photo and every image and every video as a standard thing. Like it's normal to do that. So it's really funny to me to think that there's this time in the 70s and 80s where this group of people was trying to shut down Mortensen and his techniques and then cut 20, late, 20 years later, and it's just standard. So they not only failed, but they also look like douchebag assholes in the process. History does not look kindly for what they've done, even though there are still people who like to, you know, bloviate Ansel Adams and his photography. And I'm not trying to shut him down because he is incredibly talented, but I didn't know how much of an asshole he was until I read this. And I think it's fascinating. But ultimately... This is really about his images. It's an art book. And so, you know, there is a lot of really wonderful essays and information within this book. The, the real meat and potatoes is just appreciating William Mortensen, his techniques and his imagery. And wow, I mean, just amazing work. So if you have an opportunity, I highly recommend, if you are into art books or just art or, or luminaries in industry, Look up William Mortensen. Uh, go to your library if you don't want to buy this book and just look at his work. It's amazing. It's uh, like, I was not aware of everything that he had done. And I am just breathless. You know, I, I'm speechless about the, the quality of work that he's put out. It's genuinely amazing. So my review is this is clearly five evil eyes out of five evil eyes book. It is a great collection. William Mortensen is a phenomenal uh, pictorialist, photographer, visionary, whatever you want to call him. And I genuinely appreciate everything that he's done that I've ever seen him, you know, that is attributed to him. So check it out for yourselves. Uh, this is a short one, but that's my review of this book. Uh, it is worth getting, reading, and enjoying what looking at, you know, just uh, perusing from occasion. It's on my shelf behind me and it will remain there forever because it deserves to be. It's just genuinely stunning. So thank you all so much for tuning in. As always, remember the evil spelled backwards is live. So get your asses out there and be evil.